Um, Man United, obviously, we, we proved yesterday that uh, Lenny Euro, one of the best centre-backs in the world. Brilliant 2-0 okay. win over Rangers. <laughs> and we're linked to have a move, um, though, for, for Xavi, Xavi Simon. How good a signing do you boys think that would be for Man United to, to add that to our ranks this summer? Do you know what? I like him. I, I like I like Simmons. Like when I was watching um watching Leipzig Leipzig's games back, even um when I was scouting Sesco, I could see that he was involved in a lot of their their goals, a lot of their attacks. He was involved in that, yeah. But I don't know. There's just something li lingering over him where a lot of fans don't seem to rate him like that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know where where you would really play him in this sort of system, Terry. You know, honestly, you've got Bruno there. That's going to be that creative outlet. Um, but then again, he's worked under Ruud Vanistroy before, so. I think it'll be a good option to have, whether that's in the squad, off the bench, starting certain games. I think it'll be a, it'll be a good signing because I, I like him. To be fair, I do like him. Yeah, I think it'll be a great signing. He, uh, when you said that thing lingering over him, Don, I think mm. he's got that Odegaard, um, that Odegaard thing where he was young, fiery prospect, and he hasn't found his home. Yeah. Loaned here, loaned there, loaned here, loaned there. He needs to get signed by someone now and make it his home and then grow in that team. Man United could be them, that team. He's a great player. I wouldn't mind him at Arsenal. The only thing is, we've got a youngster, got, goes by the name of Namwari, that I think they're very similar position-wise, and I'd rather <laughs> focus on Namwari. What's, 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 what's that other youngster? Was it, ob, ob, what's, what's that other youngster? That's, uh, <laughs> quit what, what? Oh, yeah. Skelly. Skelly. <laughs> <Chido. laughs> <laughs> right, don't let that happen, you know. Hey, Giuseppe, don't let that happen, you know. Hey. I think it's gonna. The thing is yeah. with him, uh, just to put out there for for people's context that don't know, he's not a Howland boy. He's not an Arsenal youngster. He, we signed him two years ago. Oh, okay, that one. Mm. That one. No, 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 no. So it's like, <laughs> what I'm trying <laughs> to say is, I would be gutted if he leaves. I'm going to say that if he, definitely, definitely, if he goes to Man United because he's got they've got one over on us. Like you know how it is, but. I can see it happening because he hasn't got that loyalty. He ain't going to have that loyalty to Arsenal. No, so. I understand. I, I do understand that. Yeah. But I, I, agree I, you, I, I agree with you on Simmons, by the way. I, f I feel that he needs a home now, as opposed to sort of being pushed from pillar to post year in, year out, somewhere that he can call home and gr grow from. And look, I, I've looked at a lot of United signings in the same way this summer. I've not, I am really excited about what Lenny Euro can become because of, of, of what I've read about him. But overall, I'm, my feet are very, 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 very firmly on the ground. Even with watching rivals get really frustrated, angry, annoyed, fearful in some cases. Even overreactions from some rivals. You know, Henry Wright did a video saying that he thinks Man United's transfer business is genius. I get why he says that. But actually, it's not. You're just not used to seeing Man United doing it. So suddenly, it's yeah. almost like, oh. That, that you're, doing the basics. you're doing the basics. Bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing the basics and we seem to be doing them well. But we don't need to be complicated when you have our budget when you have our money if you execute the plan well it will generate success it's as simple as that and listening to what you guys all heard what ten hag said yesterday yeah but not being involved in the transfers and that yeah he, he said they've taken i mean sam and mo probably on about four or five straight fact shows of, of basically the, like terry it's all load of nonsense your new structure because your manager still got his veto and i said boys like you're not reading enough like it's it may not have gone the officially. Cramps. Them two, by the way, they're the Crampins, by the way. Those two. Well, they're just they're, they're, I'm just saying they, they, they've got it wrong. They hate Man United, and the manager himself has said they've taken away most of my responsibilities, but it was what he followed it up with, which was he said managers don't really do their own scouting and recruitment anymore. It isn't the done thing in modern day football. And essentially, I'm paraphrasing here, but I'm really happy to be under this new structure. He probably thought I can I can be a manager. I can scout and buy players. It's not what the modern day head coach is trained to do. It, we're not back in the Fergie, Clough, Paisley era of football where managers were trained from a young age to manage football clubs and do those things. They're now trained to be head coaches. And, and where is the that, time as well? I don't buy this thing that right now, Terry, like, bro, if you're literally coming into work, because managers will come in first, yeah? You've got to set out the team. You've got to like do everything, train and that every day. Where's the time to be doing all this scouting as a manager as well? You've got to focus on the team. That's the main thing. You've got to focus this, on first. This, this is it. And we saw little things. And I'm not even getting, I'm not getting carried away. I'm just enjoying watching rivals' reactions because we were trying to move the ball a lot faster yesterday. A lot more one touch and two touch football. And I was like, okay, cool. 
again, I'm not going to sit and go, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. It's more of a, that's nice to see it. Let's do more. What I believe is that the football decision makers at the club are saying, this is what needs to happen. You're capable of coaching it. We've seen you do it before. Start to make those improvements. I sometimes think, if you think about your professional careers, boys, sometimes if you're just left to your own devices and no one's giving you the right feedback, you could end up in a, in a sort of rut that you didn't even realize you were, you were digging for yourself in terms of doing the wrong things and making the mistakes. And it becomes like a vicious cycle. You need that help and support around you to make exactly. things flourish and get you to the top. So, look, Man United have got a long, long way to go. And we, we as Man United fans shouldn't be getting overly gassed. We equally should be encouraged, I think, by, what, what, by what's going on. And I look at some of these transfers. Simmons is one I like. Ugarte is one I like. I love the link to Zubamendi. I hope that's true. Someone like him picking up the ball in that sort of, sort of six role would be absolutely amazing. Him feeding the ball into Mainu and Bruno Fernandes. Just, it fills me with a, a lot of hope of what our football could end up looking like. But it's these little subtle things. I don't think rivals are going to get because it isn't their club. But when I read today what Fabrizio said, that essentially we've told uh, Fiorentina, we are not going to trigger the 20 million euro terms that have been set but we will sit down and re renegotiate new terms. It shows me that the Ashworth and co, the Baradas are looking at the deals they've got on paper and gone, what the fuck is this? And I don't quite know what that looks like because they're not looking at the paperwork, but they're basically said- I saw another thing as well that said about um, the Br Bramthwaite thing. It said it conditions like on their, on Man United's conditions rather than the other way around. <laughs> These are little things that you didn't have before, bro. You used to have no. clowns. It's like, yo, we want 50 million. All right, fuck it. Take 80. <laughs> you well, know what I'm saying? And, and this is the thing. And a lot of Man United fans have ignored this. And some of the genders. I also think some are young and they haven't experienced the real world as of yet. And you've got to do... How would you sort of... How much respect would you have for your boss if you could do it on personal settings or say another organization that your company works with of taking the piss out of your firm with the deal and embarrass your boss and made him look stupid on a regular basis. How are you as employees going to have the utmost respect for that individual when you've seen him get clowned, when you've seen him do, when you've seen him do stupid decisions that everybody's laughing at? Th those people in the work environment, the corporate world, in the education world, everybody loses respect for them because yeah. you look bad. Our owners are buying 20 million pound players for 80 million. They're getting screwed over when it comes to terms. And that seeps into a dressing room, not wages sometimes directly. Wages, wages, everything, everything kind of piles up. The, the foot, even the playing staff, they turn up and see over 250 members of staff that are not needed at the club, earning a living, not making any money. Gym's a mess. Offices are a mess. Dirty stuff here. Rust everywhere. It sends a message that we are not serious. And I think that all these small little things, mm. they may not mean much in isolation, but overall, they push you towards being a better run club that's going to gain more respect. And I think that everybody's standards all rise. So, again, it's not just about Lenny Ura having a good passing range yesterday or, you know, a couple of academy players looking good. Ahmad, by the way, looked brilliant. Really, really impressed with him that's and Sancho. What's that sentiment called that you lot have? Um... Uh, Toby uh, Collier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. He looks good. He looked again really, really tasty. But it's a, it's a, it's a. I think it's everything at the moment looks great. Now we've got some bigger tests in preseason. We still need more signings, and we have to keep our feet so firmly on the ground because we are nowhere near, in my opinion, where we need to get back to. But I'm happy with the start, and I know the start has been good thus far because of the level of salt from some rival fans that I see on display. It reminds me of when Arsenal started playing well. It reminds me, I've, I've been doing the football terrace now for a long time. I've seen every single one of, barring Man United, ironically, I've seen everybody's club go through periods of growth and quality. And I've seen the same reaction in the early phases I'm seeing now towards Man United. My only hope is that Man United can maintain it. Because if it falls away, we start getting beat earlier on in the season, it will go from salt to laughter. And if, if they really thought what we were doing was bad, We'd be getting laughed at right now. Instead, we're getting the anger towards us. So, fingers crossed it can continue um, and, mean, and go from I there. Think, I, think, I think the main interesting thing for me, Terry, is just what Ten Hag's going to do now going forward, you know, because when, obviously, like, the whole new structure came in, I could see Omar Barada from Man City. You've got, uh, what's his name, Dan Ashworth and all these lot. Listen, these guys 
know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Their CV speaks for itself. So I always knew that Man United are not going to be doing the same old deals that they were doing before. Because like, like you said before, bro, it was the Glazers hiring their friends that had no idea about football and just probably just watching a few videos on YouTube and then going into pay 50 million for a guy that's worth 10 million. So I'm looking more at Ten Hag right now because I think the guys upstairs are more patterned. You know what I'm saying? What's Ten Hag going to do when it comes to like, yep. you know, when, when players get injured? What's he going to do when it comes to the in-game management now? You know what I'm saying? Is the style of play going to be rock and roll football still? Is it going to be possession-based? That's what I'm looking at more because I, I know your structure was always going to be sorted out after these guys came I, in. I, I agree with you completely, but it's little things. So he said, <clears> in an, again, and I'm not going to, Take everything he says and jump to the, 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 the highest level of positivity. I'm going to remain balanced. But he spoke about Ahmad. And we've all seen how good Ahmad looks. Especially, he looked great yesterday. He looked good at the end of last season. And the manager just basically spoke about how he's going to get a run of games in the team. He's, he's too good to overlook. There's part of me that's sitting there. And I, I've, I've drawn a line under everything that happened before because it's a new world. But there's a part of me that goes back. Well, why the fuck weren't you playing him before then? But I believe that's because he didn't have the right people leading him. So Ten Hag didn't have the right leadership saying, essentially, what are you doing? You know, like mm. KJ has as 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 as, power, as 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 professional power over a lot of the people that we bring in to do sort of like contractual work for us. But I still have to direct to make sure KJ is doing the right thing. And I don't micromanage him, but I ensure if, if he's got someone doing some editing and the edits keep being bad, I'm like, and he keeps making that mistake. I'm going to be like, KJ, you you got to stop this, mate. You, this guy's not good enough at editing. He keeps making mistakes. It's too late. The videos don't mm. go out on time. It's the same in this instance. You need someone to pull you aside sometimes and say, why are you playing Anthony over Ahmad? We didn't have that. We had bankers this, and accountants. This, this what I'm saying. Pe people, 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 fans think that like football isn't real life where these lot talk. They're going to be talking, bro, because they watch the team week in, week out. They're going to be like, yo, Anthony's yeah. not been playing well at the minute. What's going on over there? Oh, have you thought about maybe playing Diallo? It doesn't mean that they're dictating the team and they're picking the 11. They're just suggesting things because they are football guys and they can clearly see that something's not working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You need you need people like that. Well, sorry, Sky. I, I hope that's an attempt. I, I, think, I, think she meant, I think she meant to say that. Sanj, I know I know she is, yeah. I think she meant to say the other way around. I, I, I hope so. Or, I think or, there's going to be a not. I think there's meant to be a better not. Yeah, I feel better not start ahead of Ahmed. Yeah, Ahmed, yeah I need Sky. You've got to clarify that for us. Uh, I know that you're. Maybe it's a, yeah, it's a typo. typo. Yeah, it's yeah, typo. typo. It's a typo. <laughs> I was getting worried there. I was getting <laughs> worried there. You know. You know. Um, what, yeah, but, like Terry, like, yeah. like for me, like you know, like how um obviously with Chelsea, the owners and the sporting directors, they basically said we want to play possession style football. When we're building the team. This is what we visualized. It'll be a similar sort of thing as you, like. If he's constantly playing Anthony and it's not working, they're going to say, bro, this is not what we visualised. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need to make sure you fix up. And, 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 and if he doesn't fix up, you're going to lose your job. No, 110%. And I think that that's... and that's. But listening to Ten Hag talk, he seems very bought into what they want to do. And what I love about that, it gives me... Again, I'm not delusional. I'm not being... I'm not saying that it could still go wrong. Of course it can. But it gives me hope it, will, it may go right. Because the manager's bought into what they're doing. It's not like he, oh, stay, but I hate what you're doing to me. He looks almost relieved, like the pressure has gone almost. I can just coach now and do a little bit of input. So I'm hoping we now see the guy that Man United appointed. Because what I did say when I thought we might get rid of him is I did say when he leaves, I and mean, you remember this, Don, especially, I was on the many shows with you. I said, I don't think, I think he will even go on and be successful because I don't think he's a bad coach. I just didn't think it was working at the club and the club still believe he can turn this round. And I, again, I put faith in them. So I hope they're right.